Hi everyone, welcome to our live webinar, Enabling Work From Home Best Practices for HR Practitioners. Today, we're going to discuss the state of current events globally, how this has affected companies and employees, and how organizations can apply best practices when implementing policies. We are joined by Trish Surema, industry recruiter for Asia Pacific at Microsoft Philippines, Nikki Pernala, HR manager of TechOne, and last but not the least, Lars Jepsen, CEO and co-founder of TechOne. Now, before we start, we just like to remind everyone that this webinar is meant to help you have a better understanding of doing remote work and how to best establish a work from home scheme. All right, so now that we've got that out of the way, hi guys, how are we doing today? Thank you very much, uh, Arad. I'm doing great, given all the circumstances, uh, still doing fine here. Thank you very much. And Trish and Nikki, how are, how are you ladies today? Yeah, thank you, Arda, for the introduction. All good as well. Likewise, um, staying safe and keeping safe, um, but all good. That's really great to hear. Uh, now, if you don't mind, let's jump right to it. So my first question, uh, it's going to be for you, uh, Nikki and uh, Trish, uh, with global events happening uh, recently, right? Um, how did this impact your organization? So we're primarily talking about the COVID-19 outbreak, right? Now, what were your observations of the situation? And um, as HR practitioners, how do you see your roles changing in the next 30 days? Nikki, do you want to take that on first or shall I go ahead? OK, um, all right. So same with um, the other companies, of course, the impact in our organization is quite significant. So right now, um, how do we see our role as HR in the next 30 days? Of course, my take on that is that, is that um, with or without this pandemic situation, the role of HR is really changing. So we're not just um, or we're no longer an operational or administrative type of support. So this time, most especially, we should be more strategic. It's more than just about drafting a policy, recruitment, or processing the payroll. We have to come up and apply strategic plans on how we can, you know, further educate our employees, keep them engaged amidst of this pandemic situation, and make sure that their safety is our pri priority. Of course, that's not enough. We have to take actions, and we are currently taking actions and or while keeping in our mind both customers' internal and external um, uh, advantages. So we have to uh, currently we have been pra practicing the our business continuity plan and we are reviewing our insurance policies yeah and likewise there just to add um with what is happening in in microsoft i'm just really emphasizing to bringing in the human and human resources this is a this is a time where in you know it's quite unprecedented and um it's quite it's it's like an uncharted territory at this point, and we have to be on our toes to make sure that we're able to give that clarity and support for our employees. So beyond, um, you know, being able to provide the typical support in HR, I think it's very critical for our roles to expand and begin the conversation of how do we make sure that everybody is still motivated mm -hmm. and um, everybody is more, more importantly safe um, during this time, giving them timely updates with what's happening in, in the, their respective countries, but also at the same time, um, updates with how that would impact their work as well. Right. OK, now speaking of which, now we've seen a lot of news where countries have already been implementing community quarantine, lockdowns and preventive measures to contain the spread of this COVID-19. Now, how did your organization respond to this? And uh, Lars, I would I would like to direct this question to you. Now, what were your first steps as CEO uh, and how was this communicated to your organization? Thank you very much. <clears throat> yeah, I, I mean, uh, 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 we have been following uh, the development over the past uh, few months. Uh, uh, so personally, I, I'm traveling quite a bit and uh, uh, we began to see issues where 
going somewhere might mean you could not come back or you'd have to stay in quarantine. So we started to see some impact in our organization and our leadership team started to pull together uh, uh, resources to make sure that uh, that we are ready for uh, whatever would happen next. The first the, the first uh, indication was really that uh, uh, somebody would go somewhere and uh, coming back would have to stay in a, in a two weeks uh, quarantine. And at that point in time, how would we make sure that that person could come back and uh, be able to to work? Mm -hmm. uh, so we are an IT company and, and uh, uh, we actually have had uh, work from home policy and work remotely uh, policies and uh, 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 software and equipment and everything for for a long time. Uh, when I say equipment, really, you know, it, we're just talking about a laptop or a mobile phone allow you to to work remotely today. Uh, but but more importantly, we fine tuned our work from home uh, policy. And uh, then uh, uh, based here in the Philippines, I think of the countries that we operate, we had a more uh, drastic measure put in place last week. So basically all what we had already uh, figured out and agreed on, we could more or less put in practice uh, over the weekend. Of course, yesterday, uh, even more uh, uh, tight, uh, uh, you know, measures have been put up. Now, um, uh, the other thing that we did was that we uh, also uh, communicated to our uh, employees and uh, uh, yesterday afternoon we had a global uh, town hall meeting. So I, I will just uh, share one slide. I'll, I'll just click on the share so you can see my slide there on that. Uh, so um, the the global town hall meeting basically um, allowed us to uh, discuss um, uh, the initiatives that the company is doing and uh, um, the initiatives that uh, uh, we are expecting from uh, the employees, what we can do for each other. I just, I, I'm not going to go through these uh, slides. You can see them here. I'm not going to uh, detail out what they say, but basically we, we talked about first, what are the things that we have put in terms of policies, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, 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 <coughs> a workplace, uh, securing the workplace, and in ter terms of the insurances and things. We have um, uh, some locations where people need to go to the office because they, 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 uh, we are running a BPO operation. It's not a call center, but where people physically need to go to the office and do work. So in those places, make sure that the physical environment is good. <clears throat> then next, what is that we're expecting from the employee in terms of, uh, of this situation? It's a difficult time for the company as well. It's not only a difficult time for the employees. Uh, so uh, we need everybody to stand behind the company so the mm -hmm. company can also move through the situation in a smooth way, uh, especially if you are a smaller to medium sized uh, business. Uh, uh, this kind of event can really make or break uh, your company. Uh, <clears throat> then we talked about what can we do for each other? And I think, uh, you know, we're not trying to uh, say anything different than the local governments would say in the different countries, but we are trying to come up with something more practical and, and, and something that uh, our employees can can really uh, take home and use immediately. Uh, I think we, we, we identified two different issues. We talk about the coronavirus and the corona blues. And the Corona Blues is really the uh, the the depression that can come with this. And uh, uh, sometimes going to the office and being with your uh, uh, colleagues and comrades there uh, help you to get yourself out of a negative situation. But if you are working at home alone, what are the kind of things that we can do to uh, to to counter that? And then uh, we discussed also what are we going to do for our clients? Uh, our clients uh, need this technology. We are a technology company and we can help our clients uh, work from home. So uh, teaching them what we have been learning ourselves, uh, help them to put their documents in the cloud and how to run their business applications remotely and things like this. So, so kind of engage our employees in understanding that there's a mission as well. You know, we are like uh, on a mission to help our clients. Uh, it's not about uh, uh, anything else than solving problems that are there right now. And, and uh, you know, uh, so, so this communication went out. We had around, I think, four or five hundred people uh, have been listening to this yesterday in a similar call like what we have today and then with Q&A and so on. 
and and uh, so that's really the first thing we did in terms of a more uh, uh, large scale internally. But the local GM in each country with the HR has been engaging with the management every single day to try to come up with business continuity uh, kind of planning around this to be ready. OK, all right. Thank you very much for that. Now, is there anything else you want to add to that point? From an HR uh, not that part. I, I have a few more slides, but I'll keep them for I'll just close this slide now so you can, uh, you know, let somebody else uh, show some <laughs> slides and then we'll go back to uh, I have I have two more slides I can discuss later on, but they're a little bit in a different topic. So we'll get okay. to it at that point. All right. OK, so Nikki, Trish, anything from your end uh, with regards to that topic? Anything you, you'd want to add? Yeah, so. I think um, what what Lars has been doing in his organization is very similar with our approach in Microsoft. What is what what I've been seeing uh, is something that is um, really helpful for employees here is really frequent updates um, on what's happening. You know, as the updates are are being announced um, in in the over the globe, um, our SLT are also discussing how we're going to address that. Um, and not only addressing what is happening right in front of us, but what would potentially be happen so that we can give those updates to our employees as soon as possible. So that feeling of uncertainty would um, would be reduced somewhat, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. OK, all right. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Now, um, Lars mentioned actually that, you know, in Tech One, uh, the work from home scheme has already been implemented uh, way back then, uh, but lately there's been more and more buzz about it. Now, uh, as HR practitioners, do you think this is a viable solution for the current problem that, that we're facing globally? And what are the benefits everyone should consider when thinking about implementing this in the office? And also, how would companies keep employees engaged while ensuring productivity when doing the work from home scheme? I'm sorry, it's a three part question. <laughs> sorry, that was that was a bit jam packed. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's <laughs> maybe a you just okay, so let's, take one yeah. question. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Let me let yeah. me. Let me let me just chop it down. OK, but, so yeah, the by the part, way, yeah. I don't know if everybody is aware is that, you know, we're not all in any place, right? We are all doing this from our home. We, we are working from home today. Yes. I don't even know where it's Trish, but, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know where you where, where you're staying. I'm in my uh, place in Alabang. I think uh, you're in Laguna, Clarice. I don't know where you are. And uh, Nikki is somewhere in Cavite, right? So yeah. we're yes, really working from home right now. We had, you know, we have been on this kind of calls the whole day. So this technology is really like that. The only difference is now we have an audience kind of uh, sneaking into our conversation here. Right, right. Otherwise, this is what, what how we have been working today, right? right. Uh, so, so uh, yeah. So can you please just break your questions down? So yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So as you mentioned, so right now we're doing, we are all working from home, right? But yes. for other organizations who have not even thought about implementing a work from home scheme before this um, uh, COVID-19 issue happened, um, what, do you think this is a viable solution for them as well in the long run? And what are the benefits everyone should consider? Okay, so, so uh, while the two uh, HR uh, professionals are thinking about maybe a more deeper answer to this. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I have been following this work from home for, for a long time. Uh, maybe some of you can hear on your accent that I'm not Filipino. I'm from, from Denmark and uh, many countries in Europe and also the US have been starting work from home for many years for many of the same reasons that we have been talking about in the last uh, uh, couple of years here. Uh, the commute is uh, stressing out everybody. Uh, it's difficult to focus in an open office and uh, uh, you know we kind of went with the open office concept almost everywhere in the world and now people are sitting uh, together with a lot of people and getting disturbed in their work. So we have already enabled work from home in our organization in the past years, uh, um, um, but we have not informed, we have not forced anybody to work from home. It's like a privilege. You can ask for work from home and then 
uh, you know, uh, you, you could be allowed to work from home from uh, your direct manager. But we have basically created an environment where it is uh, it is seen upon as uh, as as a, as a uh, as a benefit and something that you can do if you need that time, or if you have to take care of uh, uh, something at home, for example, uh, that that uh, instead of taking a day off to wait for a maintenance guy to come and fix yeah. the AC, you can work from home and 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 get it done. Uh, so 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 that flex flexibility has uh, also been proven to inc increase the productivity uh, but but definitely uh, the 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 team lead uh, when i say team lead because sometimes it's a team lead sometimes it's a manager sometimes somebody else has an obligation to kind of start off the day with a call saying hey good morning you know how are you the same way as if you walked into the office that you don't wake up you log in and then nothing happens you know for hours and hours and you kind of have to do your own thing so so uh, uh, i think that's important uh, in 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 this work from home uh, uh, setup and of course also the policy i think this is really what triggered our discussion today is that we have developed a policy and what we have learned when we we talked about this in some of the hr groups is that a lot of companies don't even have a policy to work from home so they have to start with a policy because they before they can even you know start with the practical stuff so uh, you know from from a leadership from a business owner working from home give us some benefits some advantages and uh, I, I know there's a lot of concern about do people actually work when they are working from home? Uh, I, we can talk about that later, but I, I, that's at least my take on it. Uh, 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 Nikki and Trish, maybe you can add to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Boss Lars, for that. Um, I definitely agree. So in an HR perspective, uh, I should really, I, um, I, sh I recommend that HR practitioners or uh, an organization should really start taking this into consideration. There are lots of reasons to do so, like uh, what Boss Lars mentioned earlier. Um, in an in the employee's perspective, <clears throat> it's more of a privilege to them. As first, they get to cut out their commuting time. <clears throat> Thus, mm -hmm. their stre their stress level can be decreased as well. And then there are employees who says who said that they can when they work from home. Uh, they are more productive, they are more effective in their role, and also they save when it comes to transportation costs. Thus, um, of course, um, the, the morale of the employees are higher compared to, to those working at the office. And then aside right. from that, yeah, um, from my personal perspective as, uh, as part of um, HR in recruitment, it's also a way of branding. So ca candidates nowadays, especially if we are targeting millennials the flexibility in work is one of their top priorities so I, I I know um, every HR practitioners especially the recruiters would agree so if we can implement a work from home policy in our workplace we can attract more people especially in recruitment mm -hmm. okay yeah and um, you know to add I think beyond work from home what is important is the flexible working you know that that term flexible working mm -hmm. because when we say work from home that doesn't necessarily mean that it will happen every day or whatnot right and right, that's really right. mm -hmm. dependent on the policies that you're going to build up but as an employee, if you have that choice to, oh, okay, I have to pick up the kids at this time at school, really having that flexibility um, to be able to do that and still being able to do your work, that's very important. Yes. Now, if we talk about the benefits, there are a lot of benefits, like a simple search on the internet would give out a lot of studies from Stanford, from Harvard that says that there's increased cost savings from an organization standpoint because you don't spend too much on electricity and whatnot. Um, but on an employee standpoint, it saves you a lot of money as well, right? <laughs> yes, Next yes. is um, productivity. And that's been mentioned by, um, by Lars and Nikki earlier. Employee retention, um, that's one of the things that has also proven um, that if you have a flexible working environment, employees tend to stay longer in your organization and lastly mm -hmm. job satisfaction as well so there's a lot of benefits around working from home but um if it's a viable solution well i think my answer there is it depends because mm -hmm. not all organizations are equipped um especially depending on the industry so right. for instance if you work in um in an in, in an insurance firm 
uh, most of the things that you have to do is to, you know, like you have to file papers and things like that. It's all very physical. But how can we introduce flexible working arrangement? Maybe, you know, you work from home on some days and there are some days that you go to the office, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we also think about the type of job that someone has. So um, I think it is viable to some extent. It would be great if there are um, there are organizations or um, types of employees who are fully equipped to be able to work from home to work from home, really, mm -hmm. because we have the technology, but also thinking about do we have, um, are we talking about the, the right um, professions for work right. from home? Are we talking mm -hmm. about the right industries from work from home? So, um, you know, it is viable for some, for some professions, I think. Okay, all right. Yes, yes. Uh, oh. And then, Ara, in addition to what Risha has uh, have stated, um, when yes, it's correct that when crafting a work from uh, work from home policy, there are things that you should take into considerations. Like for example, it's a case to case basis. Uh, Trish is right, so it's uh, not it's not applicable to to all organizations or to all um, role as well. So when you are crafting a work from home policy, you have to fully evaluate the entire situation, the conditions of your company, the role, the positions of the people. And then from there, you can decide or the management can decide which positions can and should be done out of the office. And of course, you'll also have to evaluate if you are equipped with the right tools, equipment, uh, software, etc., that your employees will be needing. Yeah, I think I uh, I just wanted to add to that. So six months ago, working from home could mean you work at Starbucks, right? Uh, it means that you need some time off uh, the office environment, but you cannot really work at home. So you work in a coffee shop or you work in a, a, another kind of open space. But that is not the situation today. Today, working at home means you are working at home because you are not allowed to go out. So, so uh, um, we, we we also drafted other policies, uh, not really directly related to work from home, but similar kind of uh, uh, employee benefits. We the, we we have a, a a bring your own device policy. So basically, if an employee have already their own laptop when they join the company, we are not going to issue them a company laptop mm -hmm. um, or if they want to buy their own laptop we uh, we can give them a uh, 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 financial support for that that means we give them every month an allowance for keeping their own laptop and they can borrow the money from the company to buy their own laptop but we cannot allow anybody to just buy any laptop it has to be laptop of course that can run the applications we use in the company so right. there are certain standards that we set for those kind of privileges the same thing for work from home. You cannot work from home. Uh, even you can say, okay, I can work anywhere in the world, but I cannot work from home if I don't have an internet connection, right? Mm -hmm. Or an internet connection that is reliable to have a call like what we are having now. So, so uh, we we use some applications. We we say, okay, you have to run a speed test, and that has to be approved. Uh, you have to have minimum this kind of uh, of equipment. Uh, but but. Uh, I, I saw a, 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 a post today in, in uh, one of the HR groups. Uh, one company was listing out that uh, they're doing all this benefit for their staff during this time, and they also allow people to work from home. And the last paragraph was, um, we are going to do random checks in your homes to see that you are actually there and working. And if <laughs> you are found that you are not in your home when you have filed from home, work from home, mm -hmm. then that is a ground for immediate termination. Oh. So please, if you have any okay. errands that you need to run during the day, please make sure that it is reported to mm -hmm. the company. So yes. I think that touch on something else, which is the trust and uh, and uh, uh, the, the, you know, many of the companies who outsource work, they have uh, 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 software installed on the employee's PC that track every movement, what they do. Uh, yes. We click mm -hmm. everything they click, everything they open, everything they do is tracked. And there's a screen this capture is done from the screen at, at random times mm -hmm. of the day. So you don't know that every 10 minutes the screen is going to be captured and that is sent to a back end where somebody is maybe even using AI to see what's happening there. Um, so so I, I think uh, that's a big 
part of the policy is the trust. I mean, if you're going to allow people to work from home, we have to have uh, some kind of, 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 of relationship with that employee that it's a benefit for you. Now, if you don't, uh, like in this situation right now in the Philippines, the company has a choice, right? We have a choice to say we have no place for you to work, so you're going on unpaid leave. So getting to work from home and making a salary is actually a, a privilege. So we need to make sure that everybody understand that the company is also in a difficult situation. It's not only the employees, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we might not need to eat as a company, but we need to uh, invoice our clients. We need to receive our payment. We need to deliver our goods. So there's a lot of complications for everybody, not only for employees, right? So we are in this together and together we can solve this situation. We can maybe even come out strong um, um, I, if I can just uh, shift a little bit to uh, what we have been doing on some other things, you know, um, uh, we have been talking a lot about uh, digital transformation, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'll see if I can share my screen here now. I have to click here first, share my screen, and I think uh, this should be the one. Okay, you should be able to see. Uh, the screen now with the presentation. Um, but I think it's the same presentation as before, so I'll just change the slide. So what we have been doing is we, we have been talking about uh, digital transformation and digital transformation. Uh, can you see the right screen? Is that the right slide now with the uh, digital print here? OK, all right. So we have been talking a lot about digital transformation in, in the last few years um, that you use technology to uh, uh, drive employee engagement, for example. We are talking about everybody has a mobile phone, everybody's using uh, Grab or Uber or whatever and, and ordering their food online. Mm -hmm. And these are the kind of things that, uh, uh, you know, the companies should have been taking this kind of steps already. Uh, so when the crisis hit in this slide, we're using a fire because, you know, that's a good dramatic uh, show of uh, disaster. But of course, the disaster now is kind of in, in uh, you know, uh, you cannot see it, right? It's, but, but, but disasters and f I guarantee you there's still fires going on, right? We are still waiting in, in, in Philippines for the big earthquake uh, or the Taal volcano that will explode, uh, you know, on top of this coronavirus. So, so uh, you know, we need to be as an organization ready, ready for that. I think uh, technology is there. We need to make sure that our employees uh, uh, are trusted and they know what to do and how to deliver their work. I think the KPIs, the expectations have to be understood and agreed so we can trust and when they are home, they, they, they deliver. I mean, it's more about actually it's not about attendance anymore. It's about, uh, you know, delivering uh, the agreed outcome. Yeah, yeah, productivity. If, yeah. yeah, productivity and outcome is the yeah. is the, is a talk. It's uh, you know we actually have have tools that we are using. I can just show you the next slide just to if 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 it's appropriate now. I don't know. I'm not. We are not selling anything here. This is tools that we are using. Uh, I just asked uh, somebody to put the logos on the on the slide. Mm. So we use uh, uh, products okay. like Rike and Teammate. Sorry, sorry, uh, Lars. It's not actually showing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, we're, we actually can't see the tools. OK, let me see so. if I can. Thank you. I'm not sure what you can see, but uh, I'll try again. So. Uh, <clears throat> oh, there we go. Yeah, there you go. OK, all right. So so uh, um, so so the 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 tool that we use internally is not so we use uh, things like Rike and Teammatrix, uh, where our employees are actually logging their work. And it's not a matter of controlling what they do, but if we, for example, give a quotation to a client that this job will take 100 hours, then we need to have some kind of tool to make sure that, uh, you know, the hours are being spent. So those kind of things we require them to use when they get when they get home and they work from home, they still have to lock their time, what time they're using on which project. If, for example, we have a project management tool, they still have to use those tools at, as, as, as they, if they were in office. Then we use uh, Microsoft Teams. An example is this call to be able to collaborate better um, 
we use uh, NADOC for our paperless, like uh, Tricia was saying, you know, what, what good is it that you are allowed to work from home if, you're go if your documents are in the office? But NADOC is a document management solution where all your documents are in the cloud. And when you are working from home, you can access those documents. Floto is a, 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 a productivity tool that allows an organization to create workflows so you can send approvals to people who might not be, you know, in the same office as well. And lastly, we are using an application called uh, MyHCM, which is an HR application where you can, uh, uh, you know, do your KPIs, you can file for leave, you can uh, you can check in and check out. And we have enabled work from home in that. It was not a feature in the product, but we have created a special leave called work from home leave. So when we look at the calendar of everybody in the company, we can see who is on leave that day and when we open their leave we can see what kind of leave so one of the problems before what uh, you'd come into the office and some person is not there and unless their supervisor is there you would not know why that person is not around are they sick are on their vacation or are they on work from home or what uh, have have they met been met with an accident going to the office or so on right so now we have a full control of people who are around or people who are not around and if they are not around why are they not around so they can file for a work from home and it's going to be registered as a as a, a, it's not a, a going against any leave credits or anything but it's going to be registered in the calendar so these are the tools that we have used beyond you know having the laptop and the mobile phone mm -hmm. that we have been able to, uh, uh, to 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 bring this together this one along with the policies. So the policies and the tools go hand in hand to ensure that people can continue to work from home. Uh, uh, Azure is Microsoft Cloud. You know, we put our applications there. So again, we have nothing in the office. I actually have to go to the office earlier to pick up a webcam because I had left it in the office uh, last week, but they, there was nobody there, and that was the only reason I had to go there. And uh, uh, you know, uh, th this will enable you to do this. And this, all these products are just what we are using. You could use almost, uh, uh, you know, so many competitive products. Every single name here has maybe five, six, ten competitors competitors behind that could be uh, better to suit your job but this is what we have done so uh, you know just th that's just uh, you know how I think you know you should approach it work from home is going to be a standard whether it's because of there's a disaster it's going to be to retain talent include uh, increase productivity you know even the government in Philippines have been working on a work from home uh, law or remote working law for the last uh, uh, time and it has been accelerated now because of this situation but it was already in the works nobody wants their employees to commute four hours a day you know two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening for nothing right so anyway at the, I talked a lot so I'll leave the to the HR professionals who might have some more insight on some of this I will sh uh, stop mm. my sharing of the screen yeah. now Okay, so I actually have uh, you know a question for um, for you guys. So earlier we talked about you know the importance of really keeping track of your employees. You know the importance of trust between employer and employee. Now for managers, what are the best practices they should observe and or implement to keep their teams on track? Aside from you know the the a uh, tool that you install on the computer wherein they take screenshots really just like monitor every movement of the employee but like aside from that what other things could managers do um i can take a hit on that so yeah so i think echoing with what lars said um i really think that the two critical ingredients for a successful flexible remote or remote working setup are trust and empowerment. So if we talk about trust first, um, let's ask the question, do we trust our employees to do their work even if we don't see them, right? So mm -hmm. think about, if you're a manager, think about would it make more sense if you um, if you kind of track everybody like if they're if they're doing their work now or whatnot or is it better to be a bit more goal oriented um, mm -hmm. I mean it's good that you're doing time in and time out and if that's a requirement for your company that's totally okay but also um, sometimes you know studies have shown that um, even if somebody is at work for you know eight nine hours that doesn't necessarily mean that they're productive as well so maybe um, managers can consider setting a weekly goal 
or weekly target um, and be a bit more uh, goal oriented with um, with how we want to complete our, our tasks or give out our impact rather than, oh, did you log in? Uh, were you working for nine hours that day, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that's the trust part. On the empowerment mm -hmm. part, um, we think about, um, again, do we have the tools and do we have um, the tasks? But also at the same time, what I've been seeing with the new like managers kind of doing work from home, uh, they tend to focus on the day-to-day -day work. Um, I have been seeing some organizations um, feeling like it would be critical for them to look at how many, how many of these items did you do per day? So for example, in recruitment, um, how many candidates did, did you screen on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday? Um, and then would require their employees to submit a, an end of day report each and every day. And sometimes to get an end of day report, um, you know, it would be it would be justified with human error sometimes and it would take maybe like 30 minutes to prepare when you could be doing something else that um, that would help with the goals. Right. So mm -hmm. instead of doing like a day to day check in, um, you know, trust also comes in again. Um, is it better for us to um, to give them the flexibility as to how they're going to achieve their goals as long as you focus on the actual goals that you're that you're trying to kind of set up for that week? OK, all right, uh, Nikki, do you have uh, your opinion on that? Yes, yes. So um, I, I, I agree with with Lars and Trish. So the key thing to have a successful work from home policy is uh, to ensure that the managers can measure the outcomes of work. So mm -hmm. the, product, the productivity, it can be measured in a number of ways, whether on the time spent on the project, like like what uh, boss Lars have mentioned a while ago. So mm -hmm. we're using a different uh, tools or platform to do that. But um, right. uh, the thing is, when the manager can measure the outcomes after his or her subordinate performs the work remotely and mm -hmm. she or he got the desired result, then that's the better or that's a better solution or situation mm -hmm. than trying to measure the people based on number of hours that they that they have worked. So our current practice uh, in Tech One, uh, like uh, what boss Lars have mentioned as well, is that um, we're using this specific platform wherein um, if your work from home filing is approved. You'll just have to um, utilize the comment section and then put there your goals for that day or for that week, mm -hmm. for example. Um, it's called task uh, or task accomplishment um, report. And then at the end of the day, uh, it doesn't matter how you do it, uh, how many hours you've, you've spent on it, as long as you have mm -hmm. the output. So I think that's where that's where trust and empowerment comes in. Okay. All right. Well, uh, that's really, really great. And I actually have one question here, but we do have a lot of questions coming in from the audience. And I actually have my last question is actually similar to the one that our audience is asking. So why don't we just go ahead and jump into the Q&A? I think we have like a lot of really good questions here. Um, now, the first question that we have. You mentioned that work from home is not applicable to all organizations. However, with a quarantine in place, how can we equip these organizations in these trying times? Mm. So uh, I can answer that. So I, I have okay. a friend who have a restaurant, OK? Mm -hmm. He cannot have his uh, kitchen staff and his waiters and uh, any of them actually work from home unless he can convert his business into some kind of a, a food delivery service company. And I don't mm -hmm. even know if you, I have no idea about the regulations or anything, but they have a restaurant in a mall. The mall is closed down uh, because of the uh, of the of the uh, situation and uh, they are not able to to work uh, there. There's not probably anybody. Maybe there's an accountant. Maybe if it's a bigger uh, a restaurant chain, there will be some admin people who could work from home. But the, mm -hmm. the vast majority of those people could not continue to work. Right. If if mm -hmm. if you are in a in in a retail business and the mall is closed, you know your people cannot work from home. So so there are certain jobs in in our own company. Take one. We 
we have an office admin uh, uh, person who is uh, uh, making sure the office is clean, uh, making sure, uh, uh, yeah, basically cleaning the office and making sure that uh, uh, everything is in place there. That person cannot do that from home. So uh, of all of our, uh, I think, 50, 60 employees in Philippines, we have one person who needs to be in the office for that. But if there's nobody else in the office, of course, that person has nothing to do there. Then we have a BPO service. A BPO service is relying on uh, clients. So if the client is locked down, our BPO staff cannot work there. So there's not much they can do from home as well. So in, in our company, at least, uh, you know, there's going to be some people who are not able to work from home. So the company then have to decide together with these employees, what are the adequate uh, measures to take? Are we going to ask him to take their leave now? Uh, 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 some companies might uh, not pay salaries. Other companies might pay salaries. They, it all depends from company to company. Uh, you know, I, I think in our company, we have taken kind of a let's wait and see approach because the, the, uh, the directions that we have received have changed dramatically almost from one day to the other. So mm -hmm. on Fridays, we are told something on Mo and then we made our plans on, on Monday. We are told something else. So today is Tuesday. Maybe we will see how things will go in the next few days and then we'll start to take our, uh, you know, actions on that. But definitely there are positions that people cannot work from home. But if you talk about office admin and if you talk about uh, 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 IT companies, if you talk about uh, most of the office space staff should be able to work from home if the company has provided the tools. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a very difficult question to answer, Ara, just because I'm not sure what the context is of that particular person who asked. Um, but I see organizations in three different levels, right? Number mm -hmm. one, organizations that can cannot totally work from home. So if you're like in a service um, oriented organization, um, you can't do remote work. That's that's very difficult to do, especially with the lockdown. Now mm -hmm. there are in the next level or the next layer are organizations who could partially work from home. And, um, you know, really, I'm not sure um, how how their SLT would be taking this on. But just to share with what our other organizations are doing is that if they limit people going to work um, and there are critical folks who needs to be in the office, then mm -hmm. at least um, there would be a lot less number of people um, in the office, right? Um, mm -hmm. And that would be a bit more safer. Um, so right. how do we equip them if they're not yet ready? I think they may they may not be ready because they might not have the budget. So um, if that is the case, I think there are some solutions that are free. You could go for like a 30 day trial or whatnot and see if that works for your organization and, you know, experiment from there. Um, but what's really important is there is that communication that's happening within the SLT and being cascaded down to the employees so they know what they are supposed to expect and they know what is potentially going to happen. And being open, like the SLT being open with, hey, we're not yet sure <laughs> with how we're going to do this because this is this is very new for everybody. Um, but also at the same time being um, empathetic for other people as well um, in terms of, oh, okay, we can't give you a solution now, mm -hmm. but this is what we're trying to do. And um, we want to make sure that you're safe. So just going back to making sure that we put our employees first and making sure that they are safe first before thinking about how do we make the business as usual practices as well. Okay, all right, thank you so much for that. Now we have another question and I think this is for, uh, this is for you Trish and Nikki. Um, is it a myth that HR as a whole is reluctant to adopt to modern technology? Hmm. HR as a whole is reluctant to adopt to, to modern technology. Yes. Um, I'm not sure where the question is really coming from, but mm -hmm. there are some aspects of HR that we can't fully digitize in, mm -hmm. in a local Philippine perspective. 
if this person is coming from Philippines, because there are still a lot of um, there are still a lot of solutions or a lot of um, government things that we need to do physically, right? But mm -hmm. even with those physical requirements, a lot of the functions in HR could actually be digitized. Um, I don't think. Uh, I think it depends on the culture of the organization. Okay. And if the organization feels like the, a the HR aspect is something that they should focus on. Because if we think about, you know, the different arms of HR, you know, if we talk about training, training could be done virtually <laughs> for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then if we talk about recruitment, um, you know, I recruit, uh, I'm based in the Philippines, but I recruit all over APAC. And really how I'm able to do that is, um, is through through calls, virtual calls and through emails and things like that. So those are totally possible. If we talk about HR consulting, again, um, it's, it's a human thing, right? Like it's a lot of conversations, a lot of decision makings and whatnot, and could still be done virtually. I think in HR, there are some aspects that are better to be done face to face. Um, but at the same time, I think it is definitely possible for it to be digitized. If the person who asks the question, like if you have any specific aspects of HR that you want to ask about, just put that in the in the questions um, so that we can try to address it a bit later. Mm -hmm. OK, all right, uh, Nikki, do you have anything to add to that? <clears throat> okay, so um, same with Trish as well. I think it's, uh, yes, it's a case-to-case -case basis. There are um, facets or aspects in HR that, of course, you'll have to do face-to-face. -face. But um, the thing is, uh, currently our setup or our current practice in our company in Tech One is where our direction is, since we're, a digit we're leading in terms of digital transformation, um, we're planning or we are in the middle uh, of um, uploading or scanning or um, using technology to, uh, you know, ma make uh, HR documents and everything in cloud, in cloud based. Right, right. So um, currently our practice as well is, is that is this being done online? Like for example, um, our recruit recruitment, it's being done online, either one-on-one -on -one or panel interview with the applicants. So we're using Microsoft Teams for that. And um, we're planning also to definitely uh, do job offers virtually as well. So the setup for this is effective for both uh, parties for the applicant and the recruiters. Mm -hmm. So for for the applicants, of course, um, same with the work from home, it saves time and it cuts mm -hmm. down their transportation costs. Right. And they can take the call on their most convenient place they call home. For the recruiters um, or for the HR, it alleviates the administrative burden or it reduces the paperwork as well. So we'll just, we'll just have to engage electronically to the applicants. Plus, um, the thing also here in recruitment or online recruitment, uh, if it can be done, if all will will do it online, is um, us as a technology company. By doing this, we can also gauge how technically equipped uh, the applicant is. And for the employers, it reduces the time and cost for the recruitment activity. So I think uh, Trish is, is um, I agree with Trish that there are some aspects of HR processes that can be done online, mm -hmm. but but should also, there are also things that should be, you know, done face-to-face -face or uh, physically. Right, okay. And Trish, actually we have one question here from the audience. If you could just like give a, a summary of your answer. So is face-to-face -face still a compelling need for recruiting talent? And how do you go about this? This is actually directed to you, Trish. Okay, okay, got it. So, um, you know, I'll share with everybody my experience in recruitment. Um, you know, just to share with you, almost like 95% of my roles are outside of Philippines. And um, if we look at the entire age, um, recruitment process, first step is to have, you know, those manager meetings. So that one, check, 
you can meet up with your managers by picking up the phone or going on Microsoft Teams, right? Um, the next part is the sourcing piece. So, so for sourcing, you don't really need to meet anyone face to face. You know, you go to your career site, um, screen people and whatnot. So check, you can do that virtually. The next piece is on interviews. Now, before the all of the situation that's happening with COVID right now, um, when I set up interviews for my hiring managers and my candidates, I always prefer for them to meet face to face. Um, however, because of the situation, we want to make sure that not only our employees are safe, but also our um, our candidates are safe. So they're not risking unnecessarily um, their health for for them to get a job in Microsoft. Mm -hmm. So we have um, we have transformed and um, you know kind of mandated everybody to to move from face to face meetings to virtual meetings. Now, for this to be effective, you have to coach your managers. So um, if you ask yourself, uh, if you've met somebody face to face versus you've met somebody virtually, sometimes the rapport building, if you've met somebody virtually, may not be as strong um, as when you have met somebody face to face, right? So you have to coach your interviewers and, and your managers to make sure that there are no biases around that. Um, also coach them, how could they effectively interview virtually as well? Because things like body language and, um, and whatnot, um, those are very hard to read, um, even if you have a video call. Um, there was this funny video that I saw before um, of somebody interviewing in a company and in the reflection of their glasses, they, they were actually reading off the answers of, um, of you know, their, their interview answers mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But if you transform and go to like a video interview rather than a phone interview, then at least that is a little bit, that's a better solution um than than not seeing the person at all but if um your only option in your organization is to do a phone interview then you have to train your your interviewers to be able to pick up these these cues and to be able to fully assess somebody's capabilities um mm -hmm. beyond a potential script that somebody might be reading you know and it goes back to trust as well right like do we trust right, our right. candidates that they're doing this, the the right thing mm -hmm. now after interviews um the next item there is going to be the job offer um like i said 95 percent of my roles are outside of Philippines. And even if I do have roles in Philippines, um, it's quite rare for me to meet somebody face to face to extend an offer. More often than not, that is a 30 minute meeting. Um, what is critical though, so if you're in a country like um, Indonesia or Thailand, wherein the currencies are, are quite high, like there's a lot of numbers that you have to read, um, my best, like my suggestion is for you to send the offer details or the offer summary like five minutes before the call so that, you know, you can give that person a heads up and, um, you know, like as you walk through the offer and explain the components of the offer, at least they see they see the numbers in front of them and um, they're not going to be like stressing out in the back end, just trying to write down the numbers and things like that. And you can actually focus on a conversation. Um, and after the offer, more often than not, people wouldn't be accepting um, an offer immediately, right? So mm -hmm. what do we do about that? Um, you know, again, let's use technology. Um, I typically chat with my candidates um, after the offer, you know, give them a day or two and then just check in with them if they haven't responded back to me, see if they had any problems and things like that. So not really being afraid to pick up the phone and um, and start those conversations um, is really helpful for you to be able to kind of put on a quote unquote band aid solution if you can't do face to face yet. I hope that answered the question. <laughs> I just went yes. through the entire recruitment process. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I think I think um, the person who asked that is very well satisfied with the question. Uh, sorry, with your answer. Now we have uh, one more, and I think this is very interesting. And Lars, I think you could also give your two cents on this. Uh, the question is, what would be the best performance management method 
for a large scale organization in a remote. Uh, this is in a remote working context. How would OKRs help? Um, yeah, I, I, I just struggled a bit. I saw the question. What, what I didn't understand the OKR. What does it mean? Uh, based on research, I, I think it means objective and key results. Oh, OK, all right. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so so uh, um, in in our case, uh, uh, we, we have this uh, product called MyHCM, which we have also deployed to some of our clients. And there's a KPI module in this where the employee and the team lead or the manager set up the uh, results that are uh, you know going to be uh, uh, monitored and updated and is then the re uh, every uh, responsibility of the employee to um, update that so that means that the manager can look at a dashboard and see where the different team members are in terms of their performance management but it's like a it's like a, a um self-managed update uh, so so for example if i'm a salesperson and my target is 100 i'm the one who will update my kpis in that system with what i have achieved so when 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 you then have the meeting obviously you are going to discuss those achievement and 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 uh, uh you you have a constant overview of all of your members and your organization in terms of achieving your organizational uh, goals as well. So that I th I think the best thing to do here with uh, uh, with with this is to find a solution like what we are using, uh, where you can measure the KPIs and update that. Uh, I think uh, that's what most large organizations uh, should be using. OK, awesome. Thank you very much for that, uh, Lars. Now we have one more question here, and this is actually really interesting as well. Um, what are some of the best practices in introducing work from home or remote working to an organization or culture that has not practiced such flexibility before? I think especially with like old school companies, probably. So uh, I, I, while I'm sure that uh, you know Nikki and Tris might have some experience from other organizations, we, we internally actually have that challenge because we are operating in different countries, and some of the countries are very progressive, very dynamic, and want to want to do uh, uh, the latest and want to work from home. And people are motivated, like Philippines. A lot of people are already working from home; they're freelancers, and it's a, they, there's a, a, a lot of that already here in the culture. Other the countries is like the management will say how can I know they work if they are not in the office so we are back to the old school so so I, I think it's 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 a change management thing and and uh, if your organization want to go there then you have to go through that process uh, uh, most of the time it starts with the owners or the top management more than the employees uh, uh, I, I I find find very few employees who doesn't uh, uh, like to see that they can work from home or have flexible work arrangement it is normally uh, older business owners or more conservative business owners who like to see their attendance and who like to see that people uh, clock in and clock out and that's how we are paying them and uh, it also comes a bit into the uh, framework of the law with overtime and these kind of things which are difficult to measure when people are working at home so so uh, I, I guess we have experience in both sides but we are driving towards that flexible uh, work arrangement because it's good for the employees good for the company and it's good for everybody else so uh, you know I'll hand over to the professionals <laughs> Hey, so, um, you know, I, I think that's a really good point. And to add to that, um, for, for the person you asked, I'm not sure if you'll like my answer because um, it's a bit of a long winded answer. What I see is effective with with Microsoft is um, when we when we built the culture of flexible working, it was really um, built from um, the foundations of our values. So that would be that that's going to be my advice. Think about the values of your organization and see if that would be able that if you see if you could relate that to your work from home policy. So let me give you an example. So Microsoft values are respect, integrity and accountability. So respect, we recognize that, you know, the thoughts, feelings and backgrounds of others are as important as our own. 
Number two, integrity. We're honest, ethical, and trustworthy. And number three, accountability. We accept full responsibility for our decisions, actions, and results. Um, and because of that, a uh, flexible working environment with an employee being accountable on the actual core goals and impact that they are to achieve is there. Now, it is further underlined with how we actually assess our employees, you know. So at the end of the team, at the end of the of the, you know, review cycle, um, I think other companies would do it every quarter. Some would do it like every half a year. But in it, for us, every time we do our review cycle, we ask the question. Um, in spite of, you know, in spite of the remote working and flexible work arrangement that we have, what have you accomplished in your in your goal? Uh, sorry, what have you accomplished in your in your day to day job? Right. So mm -hmm. the how we assess people is also it uh, is also um, geared on our values as well. So see if you could connect, you know, flexible working or rather how you're working to the results and how you assess those results. If you're able to connect those two, um, then at least they're speaking with each other, right? And at the end of the day, they're not assessing people based on the number of hours that they that they went to the office, but based on the results that they were able to present for that quarter or for that half of the year. Okay, sounds good. Now, uh, just one last question uh, from the audience because we're actually running out of time, uh, but this is a good one. So. Uh, in relation to the current situation and now that work from home is being introduced, can you name or maybe recommend a few apps that could track the employee's productivity? Also, it was mentioned earlier that this app could even document from time to time the employee through his or her very own laptop. I think this is the screenshot capture. Uh, what app? Uh, what app can do that? Thank you. So I think I'm the one who put my uh, feet in hot water there. So those are the, <laughs> those are the, those are the tools we are not using. So we are not using any screen capture. We are not going and knocking on anybody's door to check if they are really working. So uh, we are in IT. In IT, uh, the, uh, the, this kind of a very uh, flexible and open relationship with employees is a norm. And if we are going to knock on, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ara's door uh, to check if he's working or not. First of all, it takes out the productivity from the rest of us because we'll have to visit all the people who work from home. I I don't even think with the current lockdown is allowed, but uh, it, you know it, it. It it is not the point uh, uh, of of the work from home arrangement. If you want to check, I mean, you can search. There's many many outsourcing companies who are doing it. For example, if you're using a a uh, a virtual assistant based in Philippines, uh, you might have these kind of tools to make sure that they are working on the hours that you are paying them to work for. But we we don't use those tools. Um, I, I I can we, we are going to share I guess the 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 slides but I I can share just the slide again that I I was showing earlier yeah. uh, uh, so um, so these are the slides that we are, these are the tools we are using and in terms of time tracking we are using something called T metric and that's really very much used for software developers. It's integrated with some of the software development tools and uh, the check in and check out and those kind of things. Um, mm -hmm. And we're also using a product which is kind of overlapping or, or competing. We are using that a, a product called Rike. Uh, that's the one in the top with the W R I K E. Uh, those two products we are not selling them. So you, you know I can uh, you can just search them up and find them and you can uh, you can uh, then uh, 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 buy them online. Um, so Rike, we are using both in our uh, software and project uh, team, and we're also using it in our marketing team. So so people like Ara, who's on this call, uh, uh, she's using that to lock, you know, what what project she spent time on. It's not really mm -hmm. to control her, but it's also to 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 judge the outcome that uh, you know how come we don't have any time to do anything in our marketing department and it's oh it's because uh, Lars is always asking for presentations <laughs> to be done now we can see okay so how much time did you actually spend on making presentations for Lars or uh, we give a client a proposal for a project and we can see that we are overrunning on time the similar way like if if you are a contract uh, contractor or construction company use project management tools so those are 
are the the two tools we use in terms of time uh, capture, time management, but it is, uh, I think, T Matrix and Rike both have elements of automatic time capture, meaning application based. If you're a software developer and you're going to use this specific software tool, software development tool, it captures the amount of hours that you spend on that tool. Now, it doesn't mean that you have been productive. I think Trish, she, she was uh, talking about that earlier. Just because you are, uh, you know, sitting in front of your computer doesn't mean that you are doing anything productive. So it has to be linked up with uh, uh, targets and in in software development we have this uh, uh, sprint and in sprints you know the developers they commit to taking off you know specific uh, uh, tasks and then uh, those tasks have a specific time allocated to them so that's really whether a developer then spend 10 hours on one thing or five hours it's up to him uh, um, uh, if he has to spend too much time he will run out of time and he will not be able to uh, do his work so then that will become a performance issue but we don't have any screen capture products but i'm sure that you can just search and it will come up left center and right because there's plenty of tools like that to monitor remote workers even kids you know to make sure that you capture the screens of your kids when they are uh, working in their pcs or laptops at home to make sure they're not doing anything they shouldn't do and things like that i'm sure you will find easily plenty of tools but these are the tools we are using Right, right. And I just want to mention real quick, um, my HCM, it's actually a really good tool for, you know, logging in, logging out, especially during this work from home um, setup that we have. So we can easily like log in uh, via a, a, a fingerprint scanner on your phone and then log out. You can also file your leaves uh, on your mobile phone. So it's, it's really, really handy. So yeah, I just wanted to uh, give my two cents in that. Uh, and that's it. So unfortunately, we don't have any more time for other questions, but we really thank everyone for uh, all the engaging questions and we welcome more. Uh, you can just email in your questions at aliana at techoneglobal.com and we'll be happy to answer all of them for you. Yeah, sorry. All just, right. Just before, uh, before you just end up, I just wanted to let mm -hmm. you know that we are running those uh, digital transformation seminars as well, which is not specifically on working from home, but how HR can benefit in digital transformation. So that's mm -hmm. one of, uh, I, I saw a few people were asking, they couldn't see the slide with the fire because it was just basically, a, it was the whole slide deck shown at once, but there is around what uh, 20, 25 slides that we do in that presentation, uh, uh, which talks about why HR need to digitally transform and, and right. being ready to work from home is just one of the things. It's not the only thing. This is not mm -hmm. the only reason why we are driving digital transformation for HR. There's many, many other good reasons for that. But of course, now the most important thing right now is uh, work from home. So that's why we have uh, kind of captured that separately and mm -hmm. without, you know, demonstrating any products or discussing any specific technology. The purpose of this specific uh, meeting was just to share our experience with the community that is facing similar issues like us. So right. I also want to thank uh, Trish for joining us here. Thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, you it's my Trish. pleasure. I'll be back and uh, to, to you, Ara, to... Uh, All right. Not, yeah. Thank you so much, Lars. And yes, uh, we do have other um, quote unquote seminars or, or uh, resources available for everyone who is interested to learn more about digital transformation. And so uh, I think, thank you, Lars. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Trish. And thank you to thank everyone you. who is watching and who have taken part in our webinar. We look forward to having you again in our next uh, webinars that we're going to have. And we look forward to seeing you guys there. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thanks, bye, bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. bye.